Gemstone Floss Tube. This is Gem Stitch here for my extremely late um, September, October, and now the beginning of November update. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you all for returning to see me, for my long suffering subscribers, and for any new subscribers as well that I've actually gained along the way. Thank you very much and thank you for your patience. Um, so I've made notes and um, hopefully I'll be able to. Uh, be able to get through things I think what I'm going to do is make several different videos um, in regards to different aspects so that they're not too long and people can dip in and out of things as and when what's ever relevant and what they're more interested in seeing so I'm working with the light today it's it's November I would say since the end of October um, there's been a there's been a bite and a chill in the air but the sun's out but it's not warm um, and because the sun's out, that affects all my lighting, as per usual, but I'm not knowing about it, I'm just explaining. Um, so it is the 5th of November today, so for all those in um, the UK that celebrate, um, happy Guy Fawkes Night, and obviously be safe and be careful um, with any fireworks that you may be doing. I know a lot was going off yesterday, because it was Saturday, so um, there was a, a lot of the... Um, big uh, firework shows were done on the Saturday night um, but yeah we do expect some more today and obviously make sure that your animals are safe and well so on to what I have to discuss today <laughs> um, right what I've worked on in September and October briefly and because I don't really want to rattle on about it um, September and October, I had a great two weeks in uh, at the beginning. I was away with my husband in early September, and that was really good. Um, and it was really good because I really needed it because um, I didn't know quite what was going to hit me when we come back. And it's just been full on. Um, up until the retreat, the Milton Keynes retreat, that um, I, I was really lucky and I managed to go to. Um, at the end, <clears throat> last weekend in October, um, I actually hadn't. I'd done any stitching. I'd done five days worth of stitching um, in the whole of September and October so really there wasn't an awful lot to show um, but I'm going to keep you up to date with the progress and um, hopefully you know get back on track again. Um, for that reason I am probably going to do another video in December um, whereas normally I wouldn't it would just be the November uh, but there's just it would just be far too confusing and far too much so I'm only going to do the September October and my plans for November update so um, what I worked on in September I didn't manage to get firstly what I didn't do I didn't manage to get my little ornament of the month series that I normally do and I'd stitch a little ornament um, which I started in the stitch mania so um, I didn't manage to get to that one so that one was a scrap um, obviously I'll, I'll try and get round to it and if it doesn't get finished then it gets put back in um, when I start stitch mania again it will actually be allocated a place there so um, what else did I stitch on or what little did I stitch on in September um, I the plan was September was um, something like going back to school or something like that in stitch mania so my plan was to do creation and I think I discussed that in my last video excuse me why I just unclip it um, I discussed that in my last video um, and I did I didn't really work on it um, but I did try um, and for that reason I had a plan to work on a project in October but that ended up completely changing so um, although I did work on a piece that was to do with travel in October I decided to also work on creation um, so this is creation by Tempting Tangles it's a beautiful piece I discussed it in my last video I absolutely adore it so the piece I'm actually working on or the section that I'm working on at the moment is going to be a confetti heavy one pretty much similar to the one that I had, excuse me, the one that I had in um, where, when I did the storm at the top. So I'll just show you, it'll be easier. So I managed to finish the waves. I 
I managed to finish the waves. <clears throat> oh dearie me, I've not coughed or anything all day until <laughs> soon as make a floss tube. Um, which I'm really pleased with. So I've I managed to achieve that and obviously as you can see I did get some lettering done um, and then I started to work on the sun which as you can probably see there's a lot more colours than it even looks like that's in there um, but obviously that's what adds to the pattern. So in theory with the whole pattern, this is the section that I'm working on at the moment, it's split into nine so I've actually got three left to do. Um, and because I didn't get much stitching done that's pretty much um, what it, where I'm at until next year now um, but yeah this is the whole piece all together and this is stitched on 35 count Edinburgh linen um, Yeah, 35 count Edinburgh linen. It looks like a cream, but because I've been doing it for years, it may actually be antique white and just needs wash. Um, which is uh, what I will be able to do because um, it's all stitched in DMC. So that was what I worked on um, for the little stitching that I did um, in September, October, in regards to following the sows. Um, obviously, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm so sorry, obviously there was um, a mystery gift exchange um, that was Christmas themed that we did at the Milton Keynes retreat, so I had stitched something for that, so um, but I'm going to put that in a, a separate video to do with the retreat, so um, pieces were made for that as well as um, we had to do a name badge as well so something was made for that so that was actually still included in my five days of stitchy time so as you can tell there really wasn't that much time uh, spent on stitching at all in September October so um, there was a new start um, for the Milton Keynes retreat and the reason I'm including it in this is because it was something that I was thinking about doing. I've actually got the, I can pull one out for you actually, these DVDs. So it's the Sampler and Antique Needlework Quarterly and it's done in collections. I think you can actually buy a DVD that's got all of them on it now, but I've got three. So I've got uh, 1991 to 2000, uh, 2001 to 2010 and 2011 to 2015 um, and then it, it went out of publication and I have stitched things from there before or one item from there before and that was actually the the, the restoration sampler that I did this year um, that was actually stitched from the antique needlework and quarterly magazine um, so it's magazines that are uploaded um, onto a disc and, and then you can you know go through them and pick which ones you prefer and there's quite a few on there that I really like and you know you, you think to yourself I'm I'm not a, a pattern holder fabric maybe but not a pattern holder and I kind of bypass some of these patterns because they're, they're on a disc um, so I'm not seeing them as regularly so I thought you know what I'm going to do is go through them year by year and pick my favourite in that year and stitch it and um, and almost bring it into a rotation um, where I can so I'd already sort of thought about this and thought about sampler Sundays um, it's not going to be a stitch along or anything like that you know me I have to have a little bit of a routine and a justification for having new starts and things like that um, so um, yeah, sampler Sundays, um, I was thinking was a good idea. Stitch on a sampler on a Sunday. If you don't get to stitch on the Sunday, you don't get to stitch. It's just one of those things. But to get it done. So that also coincided with the Milton, Treens, um, Milton Keynes retreat and about having a new star. And one of the ones I picked for 1991, or one of the ones I really liked, was one called Treasures Sampler. 
and I will pull it out here. So it's quite small, um, it's got peacocks on, on it and it says with needle in hand I stitch with pleasure a sampler to adorn my cherished treasures. So it's a, it's a sweet little pattern um, and I thought well that's ideal because it's a stitching retreat and it will be a good one to start for that and this will be a good one for my sampler Sundays. So there's no um, expectancy to finish it by the end of the year or anything like that. It's more just to do with you do a sampler on a Sunday, get it finished. When it's finished, you start a new sampler on a Sunday, that sort of thing. So I did switch out the colours, bless. They're a bit nine, well late 80s, 90s pink. Um, and they're peacocks and I felt that there should be more peacocky colours. Um, and I also changed the font which shouldn't be a surprise really um so yeah there is some speciality stitches in it but not many um the others i stuck to it, it was all charted in dmc i did change two of the colors um to make them more peacocky and i actually went for peacock by weeks dye works The light keeps changing, it's driving me crazy, the sun keeps coming out in that clouds. So that's quite variegated. And then you've got um, Peacock by the Gentle Art as well. So they're two of the colours that I switched out. And I switched out, I will make all notes and put them in the uh, the information box below. I did also switch out one of the pinks on the basis that it wasn't matching with the rest of the colours. So this is all I managed to get stitch all weekend because I was too busy chatting. Um, and so this is on a 32 count, it's been in a Q snap. So, um, But this is a, a 32 count. And this is a piece of linen that I hand dyed myself. Um, and I changed the font as well. So it says exactly the same thing, just different. So at the moment it's looking quite Aztec-y um, in colours because of all the blues. But I think as soon as the peacocks actually go on there it will make more sense um, as to why those colours are maybe as bright and as strong as they are at the moment. Ah, that's better. So that's where I'm at so actually today after I finished making my videos um, today I will be working on the peacock uh, the trip it's treasures sampler that's what I'll be working on now I did have I haven't responded to all of my um, comments in my last video and I do always try to do that and I am really sorry if I haven't responded um, it's just been absolutely crazy manic and um, but I do appreciate you leaving um, comments for me and I will get back to I will get back to them I'm just so sorry it's so late there was a question as to um, there is a book that I do use for fonts or did probably did is probably more of an accurate um, but it is a very good book and I didn't pull it out. I will write the information down below. Um, I picked it up off of eBay years ago. It's by Dal Burdett and it's just um, a whole book of alphabets, like fonts, like you would normally get. But what particularly, as, I, as you look through, and I have used fonts from there before um, and with this, um, but what you do get is that basically what she's saying is, um, particularly if you're coming towards like handwriting and you want more of a handwritten feel, is literally buy graph paper and handwrite, do it, do it yourself, um, and then go from there. And with Sleepy Hollow, um, the font for Sleepy Hollow, and um, my oranges and lemons, and this one to a certain degree, that's exactly what I've done. Um, because it's it's actually easier because you can you can see and you can adjust it and I find it easier to do it that way. Um, so when people say, "Oh, how did you change the font? Where did you get that font from?" 
the way I do it in a way is the old probably the old-fashioned me method I do the font and then I either do it directly onto graph paper or I do it and I use a light box underneath and then sort of mo um, put graph paper on the top and then use that as a guide to how um, I change the fonts um, there are cross stitch programs out there um, numerous ones PC stitch Mac stitch there's plenty of others I'm sure on the market where you can literally just type in fonts and it will and it will do it all for you part of me feels that's a little bit cheating um, but it depends on what you was using it for um, for me I actually find this easier because I can control it better so for example this was a font that was from um, the Dalbert debt book which I'll leave the information down below but as you can see so I, I, I plotted it all out in the words of the saying um, but it was too big um, the, it worked out too big so with certain aspects of it I kept the same and certain ones I didn't I then plotted exactly how much I needed on my graph paper the spaces that I was allowed and then and then basically fiddled with the fonts until I could get it to fit the way I liked it to look um, which is pretty much similar to how you know handwriting it would also be um, and then because of where it falls in line in the pattern um, I actually almost took the whole section here counted it from where this li literally these little vines start and where these are I think they're four-sided stitches start every single stitch counted out and plotted on here so that I knew that it would be completely even within that space and that's exactly the amount of squares and space that is taken up where that font is I hope that makes sense um, but my advice honestly would be play play with it um, get yourself some graph paper it can be relatively cheap and play around with um, it's it's much more creative I find um, and you can sort of you know especially if you want it to be really personal like a signature if you wanted to add a signature or something like that um, then I think that it, you know it's a much better way of of having a personal piece and it would be completely unique. Of course, there are some great books out there as well. I'm not going to deny that. There's some um, great alphabet books. But yeah, I've been I've had that uh, Dal Burdett book for a long time, and it and it has served me um, really well. But to be to be honest, it's like once you start using fonts, once you start realizing that you can tweak them, you kind of start to do it yourself anyway. You know how certain things want to look, so you kind of start to do that all by yourself by that point so that's my sampler sunday um, if i'm stitching on sunday that's what i'll stitch on until i finish it and when i finish it i will then stitch on maybe something because that was from 1991 maybe i'll find something that i want to stitch in 1992 and that's how i'll do it i'll just sort of go through the years in that way so um That probably takes us up to October. So in October, let's have a look. So September, I didn't manage to get to finish an ornament. Not even fully finished, just finish an ornament. I didn't even get to touch it. In October, I did manage to get to finish um, one of my ornaments that I'd started for Stitch Mania. And that next one was the Sampler Easter Eggs by the sampler house Eileen Bennett and it's this one it's this one I'm going to turn this off just to see that might actually be better maybe not So I did manage to fin uh, finish this one. So this is stitched on 32 count spring, slightly spring by Sparklies. And there it is. 
I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to finish these yet. So what I'm going to do is do a couple first. Um, I plan on doing all of them um, because I'll be getting them out for Easter. So I'm going to do a few first and then if I really nail down how I'm going to finish them then I'll go from there. So, but that's my October um, ornament finish. <clears throat> Excuse me, not fully finished but finished. So I'm on track. Okay, so what I'll be stitching for the month, or what I should be stitching for the month of November. Um, now, as you probably know, November and December are my Christmas stitches. It's because they're very busy months, and that hasn't changed actually. Um, they're very busy months, so sometimes um, I really wouldn't get that much stitching time in to warrant um, saying that project has had been a focus piece for a month, so I tend to... Um, spread that over the November and December so that would have been my um, work in progress of sweet Christmas so here's a picture of what it will look like when it's finished and I'd pretty much I'd got uh, this done this done these done um, I had this done and one corner done here um, so literally I had to finish a bit up here, I have to finish this and I have to finish this and a corner and then that would be completed and you think well that should as a focus piece that should be easily enough completed in November. Um, November and December are busy for everybody but they're particularly busy uh, for me. Uh, most of my family is born in November and December so not only are they birthdays and things but obviously you have got the Christmas period as well so and the build up to that so um, realistically there are times a bit like what happened to me in September and October where I act can actually go through November and December and have stitched probably a week in the equivalent of a week in like eight weeks um, so that's why I try and um, make sure that the Christmas piece is now November, December. Anyway, so I've, I've got it on the frame because obviously that is the piece that I will be stitching or I'm working on and I have actually managed to finish this one, which is here. Uh, that one where my finger is. And I'm working, as you can see, I'm working on the cake underneath with the little houses on. So basically I have this one to do, the one underneath, this one to do, and you can see I've got the corner here. This corner's actually already been done. So there's not that much to do. Um, this is stitched on 32 count Belfast linen in uh, raw, uh, but it's got a silver fleck to it as you can see. It's silver opalescent. So it'll be nice to get that done this Christmas. Um, I have a plan. I have a plan. Based on um, if I get that finished, if I get this finished before December, then I will start another. Christmas piece um, in December. Um, if I don't get it finished then I'll start another piece. Obviously it will continue on to November, December next year but so I'll get, if I get it finished in December instead then I'll just wait till next November to start a Christmas piece. Um, but if I do get this finished before the end of November then um, I will start another Christmas piece and that Christmas piece it's been quite difficult because I've got some Christmas patterns that I really, really want to do. Um, this is one of them, but because I've already done, you can probably see, um, Summer Garden by Kure Batikure. Um, that's the summer one. Um, and next year, as part of um, the Stitch Mania sales and the focus piece, I intend to start the autumn. And I thought, well, I'll be kind of halfway there through the four seasons. So I'll start... Sorry, it's kind of shiny... If I finish Sweet Christmas before 
December. I will start this in December, which is the Kure Batakure Winter Garden. And then eventually, I have all four, eventually um, I will have all four to hang up throughout the seasons and the year, um, which will be nice. Because at the moment, I've had to take the summer ones up here, just kind of there. Um, got nothing to replace it. So, it'd be nice to have one of those. And I'll probably finish them exactly the same as I've finished even down to the material of something very similar I won't have them all different I quite like the neutral it's quite shabby chic so I'll probably stick to that so that's what I'll be working on in November sweet Christmas um, I'll do another video in December anyway but um, I'll be working on sweet Christmas if I get it finished before December then I will start the Kure Batakure um, winter garden. If I don't, I won't. Oh, crash. The ornament for this month that I would like to finish is actually a digital pattern. So I will try and insert a picture um, of that pattern um, here. And this is where I'm at. It's actually a primitive hair pattern. It's called Prim Christmas. So this will be my focus piece for, um, or not focus piece, but my ornament to finish um, this in November. Um, it'll be nice if I can get it fully finished because it can actually go out in December, but we will see. I didn't manage to get the Charvin Halloween one finished either, um, fully finished, but you know. It's just life isn't it it can only go it's no point stressing out about it um so this is uh the prim christmas by the primitive hair it's from the just cross stitch christmas ornament issue 2016 and it's 27 count linda that's been over dyed by me so that's why it's all mottled so that is my focus piece focus ornament for this month let's see if I can get it finished I don't worry about the ornaments they're not a priority if I don't get them done then they'll just um, be uh, started again in the stitch mania um, so um, next year for stitch mania they'll just they'll just be allocated a spot um, until they are finished it's just one of those things um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Just checking my list. Um, right. I am going to do a separate video on this. But um, it's just so that you don't think that I've completely forgotten. Because I haven't. It's just been, like I said, crazy. Um, but I have been working on my own pattern. Um, after getting a really wonderful response from you guys. Which was absolutely amazing. Um, like I said, I'm going to do a separate thing for this. So, um, I'm, but obviously, just to as this is my normal update, I would like to discuss what I've worked on and what I've been doing and this sort of thing. And technically, this has taken up um, a lot of my time as well in between. So it's not um, fully finished yet, but it's getting there. So I'm not going to go into detail. But this is the oranges and lemons pattern of the design. I've got to the point where I can add the charms but as you can see I've not completely fully finished it yet. So, oh it's too long, too long. Oh. So yeah it's, get, it's, get, it's getting there, it's being all put together um with the charms and stuff and obviously the pattern itself i know a lot of you was really supportive and you was like uh, you'd want it as a pattern um if i was um or oh, i never really thought about pattern designing and um the, the situation is is that i've had to learn a lot about obviously get programs and translate um because i i hand draw everything so that's that's the problem so um, I had to translate it all, had to learn how the program worked um, 
and also um, there's a lot of charms on it so um, I've had to source them from all different places um, and I've, I've tried to do that in the best possible way I can for you so um, but there'll be more information I'll do a separate video about that talk about the bells because I know a lot of you wanted to know the history of the particularly the last two bells uh, Stepney and Bow so um, I will talk about that in a completely separate video but yeah so obviously that's um, I've been accountable for some of my stitching time so I'm really hoping that I'll get more stitching time I mean already from the as of the retreat I definitely had a bit more stitching time um, than I'd had previous previous to that um, as of tomorrow which is Monday the 6th I've got a um, cake to make um, it's a six tier cake for my mum's birthday for every decade she's been alive work it out because <laughs> I know that my dad watches these videos and I'm sure she won't appreciate me telling you but I kind of have um, but yeah so it's a six tier cake that I've got to make the birthday party celebration is on the 18th of November so I do really need to crack on with that so that will obviously eat into any stitching time in between life stuff and stuff um, so that's about right it's about half an hour i thank you guys ever so much for being patient thank you also as well debbie um i'm not going to say your last name because i didn't ask permission who bless her chased me up is everything all right please make another video bless you that's really sweet um thank you and hi um it wasn't intentional it was it just just got crazy to the point that you always anticipate that things could happen but it, it just went like, you know, and it, and I was climbing the walls by the end of it. The retreat really was a retreat for me because it was kind of like I have now taken myself out of the situation and I've had to leave it behind because, it, you know, if I, I use stitching as a way, we've often spoken about it, I use stitching as a way of relaxing and calming down. And to only have five days in eight weeks, <laughs> it was just like crazy. I was climbing the walls. So the stitching retreat kind of kick-started me back into getting stitching and so and I got the bit the bug again and that's not hard to believe anyway you're surrounded by people that are enthusiastic around about stitching who are extremely talented and inspirational so yeah it was it was great so but I'm going to do a separate video on that um but thank you all um for sticking with me thank you all for leaving such wonderful comments and I am so sorry I haven't managed to reply to some of them um I will endeavor to do so um and uh happy guy Fawkes night and um remember the remember the 5th of november and um take care see you next time it'll be december next time i promise um bye bye